Hey everyone, Brian Beeler here alongside Kevin O'Brien. Hello. In the Storage Review offices, we've got a review we want to talk about today. So we're coming at you to talk about the Sabrent Rocket 2 terabyte SSD. It's an M.2 SSD. Really, um, that's not unusual. What is unusual is that it's PCIe Gen 4, and we're starting to see a wave of those drives come in. And the Gen 4 SSDs promise increased bandwidth throughput. What are we looking at there? It, usually it's around 4K read IOPS and increased sequential read bandwidth. Okay, so we're going to get to that. We'll break down the performance profile of this drive. Before we get too far, you may be asking, why is there a server sitting on top of the desk? What are we doing here with this guy, Kevin? Well, it's not always on the desk. Uh, right now, we're using the SR635 as our Gen 4 testing platform. So we use a little interposer card in the back, and that's how we test the uh, current uh, M.2 uh, consumer drives. And for full transparency, this is an AMD Epic server, so it supports Gen 4 throughout the entire platform. Yeah, this one's also a little bit special. It's one of the, uh, I think, one of the only servers in the market right now that has um, the uh, U.2 ports up on front that support Gen 4. Right, so a lot of the AMD servers that are out there now will support Gen 4 PCIe, or PCIe Gen 4, as I believe they say in the spec. Uh, but only in the back part of the, uh, the the motherboard. So your riser slots are usually good to go, but not always the front bays. This Lenovo system is really great because the front bays support U.2 Gen 4 SSDs as well. One other thing is uh, that's interesting, and we don't really get hung up too much on cosmetics here, but this case is unbelievable that they ship these drives It in. looks pretty cool. Is that actually copper or is it painted? I don't think it's actual copper, but uh, it is a metallic substance of some sort. Have you bitten it yet? Like the I, don't, gold I think test. you're supposed to do that with gold, not yeah. copper. Uh, inside, the, uh, the drive pops out. Uh, no, normal M.2 2280 form factor. Uh, this has got a Fizon controller on it. What's a little abnormal is... It used to have something on this, didn't it? Yeah, so that uh, uh, they actually shipped a nice uh, copper uh, sticker that goes on top that acts as a heat spreader, but it's hard to take photos of the controller and salvage that uh, particular car, uh, well, the top side. So we took the heat spreader off for photos. Kevin tried to put it back on, but it's kind of it like uh, it's kind of like the kid that eats the cake slice and then tries <laughs> to like put paper towels back in there. Mom's gonna notice. Yeah. Uh, so we got rid of that. But what else is neat is that they make these uh, these heat sinks and oopsies. Uh, this runs I think about thirty bucks, or they've got bundles where it comes with this particular drive. But inside this is a uh, a monster heat sink. This is really pretty impressive. It's got a, uh, a little screwdriver, it's got holes that line up, and then there's a uh, another little chassis here. So you would do something like this, put your drive in more or less, put this dude on top, screw it in, and you're good to go. So you get a massive uh, heat sink on it. Now, whether or not you always need that level yeah, of heat I, sink. It's kind of undetermined because uh, we have certain drives that literally all it needs is a thermal pad connecting it to the motherboard. And that's enough to uh, deal with any of our workloads, which are probably going to be more, uh, more stressful than what a normal consumer would be. But a lot of these systems that we have push a lot of airflow. So on a desktop that a consumer would have... It's going to be more passive cool. But if we know anything about enthusiasts, sometimes the looks are as important as the performance? Yeah, and we've we've seen some spec sheets call out the design of a drive flowing with the motherboard that you could probably put the drive into. So yeah. it's a different market. It's cool, though. It's got a certain steampunk vibe to it with the, uh, the copper piping, and it's substantial. Uh, it'll fit... Probably in most PCs, although probably no not your notebook. Notebook's <laughs> going to be a little tough yeah. to use this guy on top of the uh, the M.2. In terms of specs, let's take a look at that. the uh, The drive is like we said; it's a uh, 2280 form factor. It's a PCIe Gen 4 by 4. In terms of NAND, it uses Toshiba's Bix 96 uh, layer TLC NAND. So they quote on the performance uh, spec sheet for Gen 4 interface, 5,000 megabytes per second read, 4,400 megabytes per second write. We'll talk a little bit about that and what we found there. Uh, it'll work down to Gen 3 motherboards where it'll hit uh, 3,500 and 3,400. Um, other highlights include that it comes with an Acronis True Image license, which is nice if you're migrating from one system to another. And then um, 
It also has, you know, all your normal smart and trim support, advanced wear leveling, bad block, error correction, and uh, and all that sort of stuff, and the uh, copper heat sink that you peeled off. Yes, destroyed. It, or you can get the jumbo heat sink instead. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, uh, performance that you found here, Kevin. Yeah, so going down... Um we starting off with our uh, SQL workload. It ranks up towards the top now. It's just because it's the newest interface doesn't mean it's the fastest drive in the market, and that's going to be something that a lot of people need to reconcile with. Where it's not just a uh, spec sheet game; it's how drives perform in the real world. And there are certain Gen three drives that can outperform the current Gen four drives that are on the market. Not all tests, but in certain areas. Right. So again, that's going to come down to. Uh, DRAM, controller, and possibly NAND quality too, right? Yeah. Okay, so what do you got for us? So on SQL Server, uh, this guy came in at uh, 3 millisecond, which uh, was pretty good. Actually, I mean, it's really good. Uh, right. It's not the, not at the top, but it's right up in the top of the pack. Well, you're right up there with, with well, a whole family of Samsungs, which are typical uh, clubhouse leaders in our SSD reviews. Yeah. And then going down to uh, random read and uh, random write for uh, 4K, this is an area where um, the drive does really well, uh, and the silicon power model is one that used the exact same controller. So these guys look fairly still almost identical on their for a uh, while anyway. Yeah. Now we're uh, only comparing the two Gen 4 end user drives that we have on hand, right? Yeah. And we've got another one in the review queue, and we're expecting another one from. Uh, Seagate hopefully soon. So we'll see these charts get a little more populated as more of these drives come out. Uh, I would anticipate almost all the new drives, certainly by next year, will be on the Gen 4 interface. Oh, definitely. Yeah, so this guy topped out at uh, 360, uh, 363,000 IOPS, and uh, it's a bit under where their uh, marketing claims were. But also, this is a drive where it, we're not testing fresh out of box. We're loading the drive up with a full fact, uh, with a full fill, and then we partition off five percent of the drive space and attack that with our uh, VD bench script. So it's a little bit tougher than how the um, uh, certain benchmarks might uh, apply themselves to different workloads. Well, and that's a good point, right? Because when we test these drives, you're testing them in harsh working conditions, not looking for those hero burst numbers, right? Yeah, in this scenario where everything's on the same level uh, playing field, everything's treated with the same stressful conditions. Uh, so going down to sequential read, this is an area where um, we measure around 3.5 uh, gigs a second for um, the uh, rocket, and that's actually really good. This is an area where um, it's, I wouldn't say it's fully utilizing everything that uh, Gen 4 can offer, since when we secure race the drive, we were able to get uh, speeds in excess of uh, 5 gig a second, but then as we load it up, it slowed down a bit. But if we can uh, switch this over to the uh, other drives in this uh, category uh, on the Gen 3 side. Right, so this is the everything, recent yeah. review we did of the P5, which has a lot of the, the latest uh, uh, comparables. Yeah, this is an area where uh, nothing really went past us, maybe 2.2 gigs a second. So on that on that front, it, it it's a really good drive, but it's not the fastest thing on the market. But Across looks, the board, anyway. Yeah, right? it's so it's... It's a nice, uh, it's nice showing. Definitely, uh, it's just not the fastest thing that we've tested so far in all benchmarks. Yeah, and it remains to be seen too what the platform support is going to look like. Obviously, as AMD continues to uh, propagate mostly through the enterprise, but we're seeing it show up now more in uh, in tower PCs and and other scenarios, and you know eventually Intel will get there. But like we were talking before, I think that the future is. Gen 4 NVMe SSDs because there's no cost savings really to keep making a Gen 3 drive. No. No. So there you have it. It's a uh, it's it's a pretty good drive. We like the heat sink. We like the case a lot, which we never say about anything. And uh, despite the uh, the fact that the uh, copper heat sink is in the garbage now, it was nice while it was on the drive. So there's a lot to like about the about the drive and it uh, comes in a variety of capacities, I think up to four terabytes now, which is, uh, which is great to see too. So thanks for tuning in. We'll be back soon with another review.